In this video, we're going to jump right back to the 80s and we're going to create a really awesome 1980s inspired title card. So let's get right into it. So once you've got Adobe After Effects open, we first want to begin by generating some text. So we'll press the T icon on the top of After Effects, click on the monitor and we'll type out a word that we want to say. So I'm going to put awesome. We're going to increase the size of this and we'll turn on the proportional grid and center this up to the very middle of the canvas. Now you want to go ahead and you want to change your font to something more 80s inspired. At the moment, this font is a little bit modern and too clean. So we want to go ahead and select something a bit more 80s. That looks good. We'll turn the proportional grid back on and we'll just center this up. Make sure it's completely center. We'll increase the size, center back up again. And as soon as you're happy with that, we can turn off the proportional grid. Now from here, go into effects and presets and we're gonna search for gradient ramp. Drop this onto the text layer. And as you can see, we can change the start and end color. So we'll change the start color to a bright pink and we'll change the end color to a bright blue. Now we'll press OK on that and we'll move the end point to the very bottom of the text and we'll move the start point to the very top of the text. Now once you're happy with that we can go back into effects and presets and search for drop shadow. Drop the drop shadow onto the text layer and we'll change the shadow color to white. Then from there we can increase the opacity. We can increase the distance from the original text layer. And then if you want to change the direction, then all you have to do is just rotate this wheel. It's super important that we keep the softness at 0%, so make sure that is set to 0. Now from here, we're going to go up into Layer, New, Solid. We're going to change the color to black and we'll press OK. Drag this underneath the text layer and then we'll go into Effects and Presets and search for Gradient Ramp one more time. We're going to pull the start of ramp down and we're going to pull the end of ramp up. We're going to change this to a radial ramp and then we'll put the radial ramp in the very center and then we'll change the start color to a very nice dark gray and then we'll change the end color to perfect black. If you can't quite see the gradient then you can just make this a slightly lighter gray on the start color. So we'll just press OK on that. And now that looks really good. So from here, we're going to go into layer new solid again. We can rename this to grid. Press OK on that. Make sure it is a black solid. And then we'll go into effects and presets. Search for grid and drag grid onto the grid black layer. Now, as you'll see, that will create a white grid. And to progress to the next level, we're going to go into effects and presets. Search for basic 3D. And then as you can see, we can rotate the swivel and the tilt, but we want to rotate the tilt. So we'll adjust this to around negative 60 and we'll pull the position of this down to the ground. This is basically acting as a floor. Now we can go ahead and change the color of the grid from white to a nice pinky purple. We'll press OK on that. We're going to adjust the tilt again if that's not quite right. So I'm going to pull this down to negative 70 and we'll pull the position up a bit and then we'll just extend the width over to the left. So we want the grid to fill up the entire bottom point of the monitor. Now in size from you want to go ahead and change this to width and height slider and then we want to change the width to around 70. We'll change the height to around the same point roughly so that's 73. In fact, no, we'll increase that a little bit more. So we'll go up to around 100 on both. And now we're going to go ahead and create a brand new keyframe on width. Make sure the cursor is at the very beginning of the video. Scroll to the very end and we'll increase the width all the way up to around 130. And if we play this back, we've got this really subtle floor animation effect happening. This is going to give the text some really nice movement and it's going to really bring this effect to life. Now, once you're happy with that, we can move on to the next bit. So we're going to go into layer, new, solid. Make sure this solid is black. We'll press OK on this. And then we'll go into effects and presets. And we'll search for tint. 
Drop tint onto the black solid and we'll map the black to a bright pink. Now press S on your keyboard to load up scale. Unlink the scale and we'll change the scale on the right to one. Now press P on your keyboard to load up position and we'll pull the position down to the horizon. So this should be sitting perfectly on top of that grid. Now from here, we're just gonna make a copy of that pink line. So hold Command C and Command V to paste that into its own. Press S to load up scale. We'll increase the scale to around 37. And then we'll go up to the rectangle mask on the top of After Effects and we'll draw a rectangle mask just around that original line. Go into the mask one, so press M on the keyboard and we'll pull the mask feather all the way up to around 400%. And that's adding a really nice glow. So moving on, we want to add glow to our grid. So in effects and presets, we'll search for glow and we'll drop the glow on to the grid. Now you can pull up the glow radius, you could pull up on the glow threshold, or you could pull up on the glow intensity, just adjust all of these settings to increase or decrease the glow to your desired look. But I'm gonna set the glow threshold to zero, glow radius 180, glow intensity is four, and that looks really good. Now from here, making sure there are no layers selected, make sure nothing is selected, we're gonna go up into the pen tool. So we'll select the pen tool on the very top of After Effects, and on fill, we want to make sure we remove the fill color. And in stroke, we want to change the color of this to a very nice pink. Now we'll just draw a triangle in the very middle of the video. And we can increase the stroke size by pulling up on this number here. So I've changed the stroke to around 8 pixels. Now from here, we want to add some glow to this triangle. So we're going to drop glow onto the triangle. Again, you can change the glow threshold, the glow radius, the glow intensity. I've got it set to 60, 87 and 1. And then from there, we want to search for CC Radial Fast Blur in the Effects and Presets tab. Drop this onto that triangle. As you can see, we can increase or decrease the amount of radial blur we get. But if we change the zoom to brightest and pull this all the way up, you can see we've got this really awesome bright glowing effect happening to the triangle. And this looks really awesome. Now from here, we'll just drag that underneath our text layer. So we should have our text layer at the very top. And that's really starting to come together. Now from here, we're just gonna press R on the keyboard, making sure the shape layer is selected. That should load up rotation. And we're just gonna rotate this all the way around to around plus 200%. Now from here, we'll go back into effects and presets, search for gradient ramp again, and drop this onto that shape layer. Now we'll change the start color to a very nice aqua blue. We'll change the end color to a very soft pink. And then of course we can change the position of the start of ramp and the end of ramp. So the start of ramp is on the left and the end of ramp can be on the right. Now pull the cursor head back to the very beginning, create a brand new keyframe on rotation, scrub all the way to the very end and we'll pull the rotation to around plus 170. And as you can see, that's gonna give us a very soft and very subtle animation on that triangle. It is slightly catching the grid though, so we're just gonna pull the position up just a touch. And I'm really happy with that. So the next process is to create a vignette. So we'll go layer, new, solid. We can rename this to vignette. Make sure this is black. We'll go up to the ellipse tool on the top of After Effects, and we'll draw a circle across the center of the video. Now with that layer selected, press M on your keyboard to load up mask and press the inverted box and then pull the mask feather all the way up to around 200%. Now if you want, you can decrease the size of this mask. So all you have to do is pull in these points to the center. Now from here, we're going to go back into layer and we're going to go layer, new adjustment layer. In effects and presets, we're going to search for noise. Drop the noise plugin onto the adjustment layer. We're going to deselect use color noise and we're going to pull the amount of noise all the way up to around 10 or 12 percent. In fact, no, we'll pull this all the way up to 20 percent and that's giving us a really aged look on this video. Now, from here, we'll go back into effects and presets. We'll search for curves. We'll drop curves onto that adjustment layer. We'll add some contrast to this by pulling the bottom left to the right the top right to the left, and then we'll go over to the red channel. We'll, we'll decrease the midtones in the red, so we'll pull this over to the right. So 
So we'll boost the highlights in the green and we'll reduce the shadows in the green. We'll go to the blue channel. We'll just adjust this a little bit. So we'll take away some blue. And I'm very happy with the look of that. So moving on, we need to go ahead and animate the position of the text. This is gonna be a very awesome way of starting the title. So select the title layer, press S on the keyboard. We'll go roughly half a second into the video and create a brand new keyframe by pressing the stopwatch. Now we'll go back four frames and create a brand new keyframe by pressing the stopwatch. And then we'll go back another four or five and we'll pull the scale all the way up to around 1,500. We'll go to the second keyframe and we'll pull this down to a smaller number. So we'll pull that second keyframe down to around 90, 89%. And as you can see, that's added a really nice and very subtle bounce in effect to the text. Now, if we go into drop shadow, we'll create a brand new keyframe on distance where the second keyframe is on scale. We'll go all the way back to the very beginning and we'll change the value of the distance to around 70%. So as this title layer bounces in, the drop shadow is also going to change its position and it's gonna change the distance from the text. Now from here, we'll go to effects and presets again and we'll search for echo. Drop echo on to the title layer. Now at the very beginning of the video, you want to set the number of echoes to seven, create a brand new keyframe, then we'll scroll towards the middle keyframe and we'll pull this all the way down to zero. So it starts with this really awesome echo and then as it comes in, the echo disappears. This is giving that text animation a really retro feel. Now we want to find the point in the text animation where it hits the back of the animation. So when it's at its smallest possible size, we want to find that point and you want to scroll the cursor over that point in time. Now select the shape layer and we're gonna increase the amount in the CC radial fast blur all the way up to 100% and we'll create a brand new keyframe on the amount. Now pull that back in time, two, three keyframes, and we'll pull that back all the way down to 25%. Then we'll go over five or six keyframes and we'll pull this back to 50%. So as that title comes in, that triangle is going to flash and it's really going to emphasize the impact of that title coming in. Of course, you can go ahead and you can tweak the timing of this if this isn't quite right. It's completely up to you. But once you're happy with that, we can go ahead and we can make a copy of the triangle shape layer. So I'm just going to copy the shape layer. So I'm going to select the shape layer. I'm going to hold down command and press C to copy. Hold down command again and press V to paste. And we'll adjust the rotation. So we'll pull the first keyframe to 158. In fact, no, we'll change that to around 190. And then we'll press S on the keyboard to load up scale and we'll reduce the scale of this down to around 70%. And that looks really awesome. Now from here, we need to go ahead and we need to recreate the four by three aspect ratio. So we'll go layer, new, solid, change the color of this to black. We'll load up the proportional grid, go to the rectangle mask tool, and we'll draw a rectangle mask in the very center of the frame using these two grid lines as reference. So I'm gonna draw this perfect rectangle in the center of the video. We'll press M on the keyboard to load up mask. We'll press the inverted box. And then if we press S on this, we can just increase the scale to around 135%. And then we'll just lock this layer off so we can't adjust the aspect ratio. And there you go, we're really starting to get there. This is looking really awesome now. Now, once again, we're gonna go back into layer, new, solid. We'll create a brand new solid, make sure this is black. We'll go up to the paintbrush tool on the very top of After Effects. We'll double click on the monitor. And then on the right side of After Effects in the paint tab, we can change the color of this from whatever it is to white. So in my example, it's green to white. And then we can just add some dots on the center of the video. Of course, if you want to change the brush size, then all you need to do is go into brushes 
and you can change the diameter, you can change the angle, roundness, hardness, spacing, it's up to you, but we're just recreating the look of stars right now. And just before you start doing this, in the paint tab, make sure the duration is set to constant, not single frame. So make sure this is set to constant, paint all of the stars that you like, and once you're happy with this, we'll go back into composition, comp one, We'll adjust the blending mode of this from normal to screen. Then we'll go back into effects and presets, search for CC radial fast blur, drag that onto the stars, and then we'll increase the value of this and change the zoom to brightest. And now if we play this back, you can see we've got this really awesome 80s inspired text effect right inside of Adobe After Effects. This was a long tutorial, but it's definitely worth it because this effect is really awesome. And there you go. If you enjoyed that, then please do let me know in that comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe, check out the previous video. And of course, I will see you tomorrow for another brand new video. Thank you for watching.